All right. Uh, sorry, my mind is in a blank right now. But it's so awesome to see Linda here. We have actually been running Rails Girls for a year already. So we have been doing it every single month. Um, we don't always do it in this location, but we actually do it um, at ThoughtWorks. Uh, it's an office located in Tanjong Pagar area. Um, so we have it usually on the last Saturday of the month. And we would come together and continue to learn Rails, learn Ruby. Uh, with all the coaches, we'll have um, time on that day itself. I'll talk more about the meetups later. So I've been running this for a year, so um, it's good to see new faces again. I hope to see all of you again consistently for the following months to come. So, all of you are first timers, we'll be going through the basics. For those who have been here a few times, um, we'll have some coaches to sort of handle their learning. Tanya, so you'll be taking care of that area, right? Okay, cool. So the first timers can sort of pay attention to me right now because we'll be going through the basics. Um, and hopefully, by the end of the day, not the end of the day, but by 1 p.m., you would learn something useful that you can take back and show it off to your friends. All right? Okay, first question. Um, what is a web application? Maybe I shouldn't show this. What is a web application? Can anyone tell me what is a web application? Can you give me examples of web application? Facebook. Twitter, that's good. Any exam other examples of a web application? No more? You only use Facebook and Twitter? <laughs> Airbnb? Anything else? Amazon? Someone said email, is it? Gmail. Gmail, yeah, Gmail, okay. Yeah, so all of these are sort of what we call web applications, right? Um, in a simple analogy, uh, you can see that when we talk about web applications, we usually talk about the internet. Because um, you'll be assessing your web application through the internet, you have an internet connection. Um, well, how will you be assessing the internet? You'll be using a client or a browser. Um, which you probably have on your machine, it's usually like a Chrome. Can the people behind hear me? Okay, yeah? which is usually like a Chrome, a Firefox, or Internet Explorer, right? So that's what we call the client or the browser. Finally, um, we have the server over here, which is actually where the web applications reside. To change it into a different analogy, um, how do we actually assess the web application? Imagine you're in a restaurant. You can browse uh, the menu, right? So, no, can I hear? Oh, uh, sorry, ah. Uh. Hey, hello. Thank you. Whenever I hold the mic, I feel like singing. Hey, no, I like it. Dude. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry, ah. Uh. So, um, for example, uh. Where was I? Yeah, so you're like the client. Um, whenever you're browsing um, the browser, you're sort of looking at the menu of food items that you'd like to eat at the restaurant. So, um, when you have finally decided that, hey, I want to eat chicken rice, I want to eat laksa, um, you will point to the menu and let the waiter know about it, right? So in a similar analogy, you're sort of like clicking in the browser on a certain link to tell the internet that, hey, I want to get this something um, from somewhere. So the waiter would take your order and go to the kitchen. Whatever he does in the kitchen is sort of a mystery to you. He could be buying your food from the restaurant next door, or he could be asking the chef to cook it. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the, your food will be prepared, and it will be returned to the waiter and the waiter will return the food to you. So, in a similar analogy, that's what's happening whenever you access a web application. You talk to a server, you ask the server that, hey, I want to see all the feeds of my friends, or the photos of my friends. You don't care what it does in the background. 
so long as the photos are returned to you through the internet. So some words for you to digest. You tell the waiter what you would like to eat, a dish, by pointing on the menu. The waiter delivers your request to the chef. The chef prepares your dish and sends it back to the waiter again. If we replace all the words in red with internet terminology, it reads like, you tell the internet what you would like to see, so a page by pointing or clicking in the browser. The internet delivers your request to the server, and the server prepares your page and sends it back through the internet again. And finally, you have it appearing on your browser. Of course, there's more to it, but in a high-level analogy, that's what really is happening. All right? So web applications actually act like chefs. Um, they take your request, they do something with the request, and finally, they send the result back to you. So our main purpose for today would be we want to try and create a web application. Before we do that, we didn't know what are the tools we need to actually create the web application with. Um, this is titled Rails Girls, right? So I'll give a little bit of background to why it's Rails Girls, or rather Rails uh, in particular. So Rails come from actually the name Ruby on Rails. Okay, so let's cover Ruby first. So what is Ruby? Ruby is a programming language. Um, just like you might have heard about Java being a programming language, PHP being a programming language, .NET, um, Python, Clojure, etc, etc. So it's just a programming language, just like English, French, Japanese, all right? So Ruby is a programming language. And these are actually some of the web applications out there that are powered by Ruby. So you have Twitter. So do you know Twitter is written in Ruby on Rails? No. Yeah, so it's actually written in Ruby on Rails. Of course, it has evolved a lot and they have changed the internals um, with other programming languages. But when it first started, it was actually created with Ruby on Rails. Next, we also have Groupon. So Groupon is also created with Ruby on Rails. Airbnb. Um, Shopify, Hulu, Viki, Bloomberg, Slideshare, Basecamp, Zendesk, Friendster, Wigo, etc. Alright, so these are just some of the web applications out there um, that has been created with Ruby on Rails. Do you use any of these? Twitter, right? I'm sure most of you use Twitter. Basecamp? Oh, Slideshare, very good. Airbnb, oh, everything. <laughs> yes. So it's everywhere all around us, just that we might not know what exactly is the technology is being built with. But now you know some of these already. Um, so what exactly is Ruby, right? I, I mentioned that it's a programming language. Um, so th this space is not important. <laughs> but, yeah, this is not important. But you, you need to remember this guy. So he's, you can call him Matt, or you can call him... Uh, his full name is Matsumoto Yukihiro. Right? He's the creator of Ruby. Uh, he was here actually um, for the conference in the last two days, but his schedule is really tight, so he actually flew off um, yesterday night. And he actually created Ruby um, like 20 years ago, um, in the mid-1990s. So the backstory is that uh, he really loves programming languages, and at that time, there was the Great Depression, so a lot of his colleagues were actually laid off. Um, he was fortunate to be able to stay on the project, but the project went into maintenance mode. So uh, when the project is in maintenance mode, he actually has a lot of time uh, to do other stuff. So he decided to you know, scratch his speech and started to create this programming language. Uh, eventually, the community grew, and it became into what we know as Ruby. So it's influenced by his love for a lot of other programming languages like Perl, Smalltalk, Eiffel, Edda, and Lips. So just a trivia that it could have been called Coral instead of Ruby. Um, I can't remember the exact story now of why they decided to go with Ruby. I think it's because it's the name of his friend's daughter or something. I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, 
Um, so you can see that Ruby went into version 1.8 in 2003, 1.9 in 2007, and now we are in 2.0, 2.1, even 2.2. Um, Ruby only grew in popularity because of Rails, and that's where the story of Rails came in. So Rails uh, was started in 2005. That's like how long ago? 10 years ago. So it's already considered mature technology. So mature technology is not cool anymore. But cool, <laughs> but when it's boring, it means it's stable, right? So it's stable technology. Um, so it has already uh, been 10 years. They just celebrated the, the 10th uh, anniversary. And Rails, okay, so before we move on to Rails, to, to leave a quote on why, um, we are all doing this, why we really believe in the vision of uh, Mets is because, uh, at least for me, like, right? It's because of this quote over here. Uh, I hope to see Ruby help every programmer in the world to be productive, to enjoy programming, uh, and to be happy. And that is the primary purpose of the Ruby language. So I'm not sure if any authors of other programming langu languages have said this before, um, but at least this is what I know of Mets. And that's why uh, a lot of us, you know, love to use Ruby, and I hope it is the same for you as well when later you, you try your hands out with Ruby, alright? Um, so, like I said, uh, why, why do we want to use Ruby, right? To us, a lot of us, if you can ask the coaches later, um, Ruby is fun, uh, it is productive, it's actually very beginner friendly as well, it reads, a lot of it reads just like English. If you think about a certain action in English, you would probably find a similar uh, method that you could call in Ruby as well. Um, in this way, we think that it is really elegant, all right? And of course, Ruby engineers are really in demand right now. So if you're thinking of switching careers and you might want to become a programmer, maybe you want to become a Ruby programmer as well, to be specific. Um, a lot of coaches, I'm sure their companies are hiring, you can ask them as well. Uh, in fact, yesterday we had um, the conference, right? So during the conference, we had a large uh, jobs board. So it was like almost half of this wall and all of it was filled with job ads, looking for Ruby programmers. And the pay is decent or maybe even pretty high. <laughs> Alright, so to top off all of that, right, the Ruby community is amazing as well. Um, like Linda has said, all of us are volunteers who didn't get paid. Uh, if you want to pay us, I'm sure yeah, the dollar and cents here <laughs> would be uh, astronomical. Okay, but uh, what is Rails exactly then? So we know that Ruby is a programming language. So what is Rails? Or rather, what is Ruby on Rails? Right? Uh, this is the logo, that, that is the website for Ruby on Rails. It's actually created by this guy. Okay? This guy over here. His name is David Hanemeyer Hansen, or we call him DHH for short. Um, this framework is sort of extracted from his work on Basecamp. So some of you have used Basecamp. So when he decided to create Basecamp, he decided to, hey, Ruby looks good, let me start to use Ruby. Um, there wasn't any framework around that time in 2005. So as he started to build his application, he thought that, hey, there are some parts I could actually extract out and open source it, give back to the community and see what others, you know, uh, like about it and feel about it. So he extracted it from Basecamp.com um, and released it and called it Ruby on Rails. And that's where it all started. People started, you know, looking at the project, people started liking the project and actually using it uh, in creation of their own web applications. Uh, and so, 10 years since, a lot more applications have been built with Ruby on Rails. And DHH is still actively working on, uh, you know, providing the vision for what Ruby on Rails should look like going forward. Um, a lot of, you know, the philosophies of Ruby on Rails uh, is linked to MVC, which is Model Views Controller. Later, we'll look a little bit at what MVC really means. Um, also, we also have this philosophy about uh, testing first. So, this is sort of a philosophy that um, a lot of other programming languages don't really enforce or encourage. I mean, it is there, but they don't really view it as a necessity. So Rails itself feels that um, testing is good, and so we should always put testing on the forefront before we actually build our applications. Um, there's also this concept of dry, which really means uh, don't repeat yourself. So because of this, there's a lot of um, modules, uh, libraries that you can use 
uh, in the Ruby on Rails ecosystem uh, that will really accelerate when you actually want to build a web application. Finally, convention over configuration. So Rails is very opinionated. Uh, it's all full of DHH opinions. Um, some like it, some don't like it. <laughs> um, I like most of it. So uh, because of these conventions, um, if you understand them and you know the background about these conventions, it actually makes your life easy. Um, there's no you know debates, arguments about what's right, what's wrong. Let's just follow this, and life moves moves on, and you can actually continue to build the product rather than debate about you know uh, code structure, code syntax, etc. So it actually makes you pretty productive in that sense. Uh, to give another trivia, so DHH is not only a programmer. Uh, he also has another career as a race car driver. So if you type his name in YouTube, you might not only see his talks on uh, Ruby conferences, at Rails conferences, you might see him behind his car in a steering wheel and then driving his racing car around. And I think he has built for himself a reputation in the racing circuit as well, if I'm not wrong. Right. So it doesn't mean that if you code, you're not cool. If, if you code, you can be really cool as well. Alright, so we're going to touch a little bit about uh, model view controller because I just explained it a little bit. Um, so what you see here um, is that we have these three components over here, right? Whenever you load a web page, what you're getting on your browser is actually what we call HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So what are these three things? Let me explain CSS first. CSS is the thing that gives you your colors, right? That gives it a different typography. For example, Times New Roman versus Korea versus Arial. These are the things, Vesco View. These are the things controlled by CSS. Uh, and what is it controlling then? is controlling the HTML, which is the DOM, which is what we call the DOM, the, the, the basic building blocks of your paragraphs, your text, your headers, your titles, etc. So CSS is basically styling your text on the page. Finally, you need some interactivity probably in your website, and that is where JavaScript comes in. So if you do not have JavaScript, for example, if you go to Facebook, you scroll down, JavaScript is broken, right? It will probably not load more. It will just be stuck there. You will just maybe see the first page after it renders. And those interactive components are actually managed by JavaScript. All right? So sometimes you see a modal pop-up on your page. So that's JavaScript. What else is controlled by JavaScript? Advertisements, right? So if you hate advertisements, disable JavaScript in your browser, then you won't see any advertisements in your browser. Um, so this is what they are really getting in your browser, right? Nothing else. But how do you get this in the first place? So remember when I tell you you're on a browser, you click on a link somewhere in the browser, it's actually going through the internet to talk to a chef, right? The web server. So this is where the web server is. So when you click, it goes to the web server and it starts to talk to the web server. The web server over here is the one that contains the logic of your web application. What kind of logic? Logic including you only want to see the photos of your friends. Right? You do not want to see the photos of other people. Or logic that you do not want others to see photos of yourself. Right? These are logic um, that are all encapsulated within the server in your web application. And this logic can be programmed in any language that you want to do it with. Uh, you can do it in Ruby, which is what we're going to be doing today. You can do it in, for example, like say, PHP or Python, etc. But this is the logic layer, um, which is what we call the web application. And that's what we want to try to build today. Um, not only that, the logic doesn't contain the data, right? You will still need to 
store the data somewhere, you still need to retrieve the data from somewhere else. And this layer is what we call the database layer. Um, think of a database as your Excel spreadsheet. That, in the very, that is the very simplest form of a database, an Excel spreadsheet. It just contains of rows and columns. You put data in, you can get data out. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Excel? Excel, Excel spreadsheet, yeah. How many of you have used pivot tables? How many of you have used vertical, I don't know. The, the, yeah, see, I'm not an expert at Excel as well, right? I know there's some vertical or horizontal or whatever. Right, but pivot table, pivot table is a good example of using your data and providing a different view of your data, right? Um, so those familiar with pivot table know that you can sort of like retrieve a column and do a count or a sum on that column. And so that is sort of the logic that is encapsulated in here. What is in here is the basic building block, just the raw data alone. So of course, when we are talking about web application, you cannot use an Excel spreadsheet because you probably have a lot of data, right? Excel spreadsheet may not be good for that. You can try it out, right? Um, so the kind of databases that we talk about includes Postgres, MySQL, Oracle. So if you work with your uh, IT departments before, you probably have heard of them telling you about, oh, I need to set up a server, I need to install Oracle first, right? I need to install the database first. And then these two process which usually take like weeks or months because they first need to buy the server, then you delete the server, install the server, install the database, etc. So that's how we get our jobs, lah, right? Okay, um, so how does all this translate into what I call MVC, Model Views Controller, that concept, right? Um, this is basically our view. This is what we call the controller. And this is what we call the model. So that's where it comes in, MVC. All right, so the controller is sort of the one responsible for controlling everything. It takes things out from the model, it processes it, uh, passes it, you know, do a pivot table with it, whatever. It generates the HTML over here and then it returns it to the browser. So that's what we call MVC. Any question so far? Good, huh? Yeah, questions? No? Okay. So if we have no questions over the basics, we're going to try our hands at Ruby right now. Um, do all of you have internet connection? Yes. yes? So if you don't, this is the password. So if you do, please go to uh, this website over here, tryruby.org. Alright, tryruby.org. Do you need the password? It's over here. Or is there? Yes. Try Ruby.org. Yeah, and now, I'm going to sing a song now. And uh, now, <laughs> we're going to spend 30 minutes working through Try Ruby.org. So you should be able to read the instructions on the left and then type on the right. At this point, my coaches will be walking around to assist you if you have any problems. So what is tryruby.org? Basically, you're going to be typing Ruby, right? You're going to be using Ruby, using the programming language. Um, and uh, going through the exercises will show you how easy it is to get started and do certain things with Ruby. All right, those please try.